Welcome students to my video class. This is Anupam Choudhury and I am here to discuss some important thing about class 11th portion, chemical bonding portion that is MO theory. In short, MOT or MO diagram MOT. If we have clear conception regarding MO theory, then we are able to understand which one is paramagnetic, which one is diamagnetic, that means the magnetic property of any molecule, any substance, idea about homo lumo, that is highest occupied molecular orbital, lowest unoccupied molecular orbital, bond order, bond length, bond dissociation energy that is known as bond strength also. So all these things we can have some idea if we have clear idea regarding MO theory. Okay, so let's start. For bonding, for the formation of a chemical bond, covalent bond, we need to fulfill three criteria. What are those? One is energy, another one is direction, another one is symmetry. I repeat once again, one is energy, another one is direction, another one is symmetry. If two atomic orbitals are far energy difference, are having far energy difference, suppose this orbital is here, suppose this orbital is here, then bonding is not be formed. Clear? Bonding is not going to be formed because mismatch of energies. So if two orbitals are in similar level, then bonding could be stronger. If this much difference is there, small difference, then also bonding can be happening. But if large energy gap is there between two atomic orbitals, then chemical bonding is not going to be formed. Got it? Now come to the direction part. If some orbital is moving in this side, some orbital is moving in this side, then bonding would be happening. But if one orbital is moving in this side, one orbital is moving in this side, then bonding is not going to be happening. Clear? And what about symmetry? Symmetry means similarity. Similarity. Suppose we have a coin. Then we have two sides of it. One is head, one is tail. So if the heads of two coins come together, that means same similarity come together. If head and tail come together, then anti-symmetry come together and thereby anti-bonding will be observed. Got it? So same symmetry that is plus plus or minus minus will going to form bonding and plus minus are going to form anti-bonding. I hope it is clear. So let's have some picture of that before completion or before doing the MO diagram, we need to know what are sigma bonding, what are sigma anti-bonding, what is mean by pi bonding, what is mean by pi anti-bonding, all these things in clear. Got it? Now, the thing is that, you know, S orbital is spherical in shape, like a canvas ball, like a deuce ball, spherical in shape, 3D figure. But P orbital has dumbbell shape. I will discuss all this shape in quantum mechanics video, atomic structure, how does this same shape of this orbital comes. Okay, fine. So, suppose this is Px orbital, this is Py orbital, this is Pz orbital, and this is also Px, Py, Pz. And if x axis is the bonding axis, then px and px of two atoms are going to form sigma. 
doesn't it? Px, Px are going to form sigma. Py, Py are going to form pi as they are parallel overlap. Because in chemical bonding, you know, I expect that sigma bonding is formed due to head on overlap and pi bonding is formed due to partial overlap. So between sigma and pi, which one is more stable? Obviously, sigma bond is more stable, doesn't it? Because sigma bond is made by direct overlap. Now come to the pi part. This is Py, Py will, will, will uh, form pi. Pz, Pz also will form pi. Because sigma bond between two atoms can be formed once, one and only. And all the remaining bonds will be formed. That is known as pi. Got it? Now come to the bonding and antibonding diagram part. Let us consider this is sigma. 1s or 2s, this is atomic orbital of 2s and when they are mixing, they are going to be mixed with each other, then same symmetry, same energy and direction is also same. So, they will form a sigma 2s. Got it? Sigma 2s. Similarly, 1s, 1s, sigma 1s. Because head on overlap is there. But if plus symmetry sigma 2s, and that is also 2s orbital, but opposite symmetry, then anti bonding will be there. Anti bonding will be there. Okay, anti bonding will be there, and that's why it is indicated by the symbol star. Sigma star is the anti bonding part. So, you guys have clear idea regarding what is sigma bonding, what is sigma anti bonding. Now, come to the pi part. If Px orbital, let us consider this is Px, let us consider another atom of another atomic orbital Px of another atom. So when they try to form a bond, they will form sigma because Px, Py, Pz, Px, Py, Pz, so Px, Px is going to form sigma and Py, Pz all are going to form pi. So that is why now it becomes, look at that, now it becomes, this portion will be joined together, now it becomes sigma 2px, okay, sigma 2px. And what about its antibonding? Anti-bonding will be like that, plus minus and opposite symmetry comes, then they will form anti-bonding and then the portion will be known as, then the portion will be known as sigma star, sigma star. Okay, sigma star 2 ps because it is anti bonding, opposite symmetry come closer to each other. Clear? Now come to the pi bonding and pi anti bonding. Pi bonding means parallel overlap. I have already explained to you because sigma is formed between two atoms, one and only. If triple bond is there, then one is sigma and remaining all two bonds are pi. So that's why it will form like that. If it is Py, if it is Py, then it will form like that. Okay. 
Okay, so it is known as pi two p one pi two p one, and this is known as nodal point. This is known as nodal plane where electron density will be zero. Node means electron density will be zero. Fine. Similarly, if p x is going to form sigma, then p y p y pi and p z p z also form pi. Clear. So, what about the anti bonding of p y? Anti bonding will be look like that. If plus minus and minus plus are coming together to form bond, because anti bonding means opposite symmetry come closer to each other. What my point? So it is known as pi star two p y, or it is known as pi star two p z also. When z orbitals come together, okay. So all these are the ideas that how the bonding orbital and anti-bonding orbital look like. Okay. Now come to the MO part. Emo diagram part. Simple example we consider that is for hydrogen. Simple example. Hydrogen means you know one s it has one s one. So this is atomic orbital of hydrogen. This is also atomic orbital of hydrogen. Got it? Now two orbital come together, so there is two possibilities: anti-bonding and bonding. Plus plus bonding plus minus anti-bonding. So which one is more stable? Bonding is more stable. That is why bonding energy will be lower, and anti-bonding energy will be higher. So here sigma one s and sigma star one s. Got it? They are coming from these two orbitals. So now we need to join this by these lines because these atomic orbitals are the parents of this molecule. So this is known as MO of molecular orbital of H two. So how many electrons you can see? You can see one, one. That means total two electrons. An electron should be filled up from the lower energy level. So that's why here two electrons should be present, and its anti bonding is totally negative because there are no two, no more electrons. To be filled up. What my point? So now the bond order we need to determine. We have a formula. Remember this formula: bond order, number of electrons present in bonding, minus number of electrons present in anti-bonding. So that's why it will be two minus zero. Divided by two, and you know two hydrogen atom. How many bond will be formed in between them? So how many bond formed between them? One. Got it? So this is the MO of H2. So if someone is asking you what is the MO of H2 plus? What is the MO of H2 plus? That means H and H plus. H and H plus. So in case of H two plus, these electrons will be absent. This electron will be absent, isn't it? If it is H plus, we need to consider them, and then the bond order will be one minus zero by two. So it would be point five. But if bond order is in fractional level, one point five, zero point five, two point five, 
these are unstable doesn't exist got my point so this is the bond order of h2 h2 plus so i think now you are able to calculate h h2 minus if the question is given h2 minus you can also calculate bond order got my point one should be considered h and another should be considered h minus an electron should be filled up from lower energy level because lower energy is more stability got it it has more stability so students this is the, the end of this video and in this video we have learned that what is sigma bonding sigma anti bonding pi bonding pi anti bonding and the bond order of h2 h2 plus like that if bond order if bond order becomes fractional value then the bond doesn't exist okay so in my next video i will discuss some important thing regarding homonuclear diatomic like o2 f2 n2 and heteronuclear okay so for more videos subscribe to my channel thank you so much